from that spot it cannot move. They took the key out of it. <laughs> Even though someone cries out to it, it cannot answer. It cannot save. It cannot save them from their troubles. In the Near, in the near East, deities generally were housed in temples and shrines, but on fest festive, festive occasions were carried out in uh, procession. Like the already mentioned Akitu, the barley god, uh, they did name it Harley Barley now. The what? <laughs> Harley Barley? <laughs> oh, oh goodness, we're <laughs> we're digressing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, festival in Babylon or the Opal. Opit Opal, yes. <laughs> Opal, the, the god of beauty. The Sokar, the underworld god, festivals in Egypt. Contrast this to the Lord God, whose presence is symbolized by a moving cloud or a glory in a burning pillar of smoke and fire that he created. Now when sometimes secular scholars will try to trip you up with this because they'll say, well, this was part of the... Uh, the smoke was part of the incense that they were carrying. Well, I don't know about you, but I have seen burning incense, and it doesn't make a huge pillar of smoke. And the same thing with fire. In order to have enough fire to make a pillar, a, a single man would have trouble carrying this thing around with him. I mean, they, they didn't have a whole lot of technology, these wandering people. So you can't imagine they had some kind of special thing sitting out there that they could build this kind of uh, fire and smoke and carry it around themselves. They're talking about the Bronze Age and uh, the Iron Age. Um, this would push their technology even if you were in civilization, much less being just the things on your back out in the desert. So when they argue that well, this was something that they created. This is very hard to imagine the technology that could be put together by people wandering in the desert. So when they say that this was done by God and it was the, represented the presence of God, you want to believe God's word, and that's what it meant. It's an interesting thing uh, when Wednesday nights were uh, studying on the holiness of God and R.C. Sproul's stuff? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, talk, and when the discussion about the holiness, holiness comes about, the, the, by the word holiness, it's a separate thing. God isn't pictured. He, he never allowed his presence to be seen. Uh, it was always in the form of something like this, or he passed in back of Noah, in front of Noah, in the backside. Uh, but you never had a clear picture of him. And, and I think that's maybe one of the reasons that the... Um, he wanted, he was a jealous God. He would not share his glory with idols and by even a representation of yeah. himself. Well, he's, doing, he's also doing what's necessary. He's doing what's necessary to keep the people uh, in line here, keep them focused on where they need to go. Uh, here's a pillar. This is what you need right now. Here's a pillar of smoke. Follow it. This is what you need right now. Here's a pillar of fire. Follow it. That's all you need. That's the kind of same thing God does with us. Sometimes that's hard to understand. You know, God help me out of this situation. Okay, here's what you need. That's not what I want, you know. No, that's what you need. Follow this. This represents me. It's okay. Follow it. You're all right. The word Yahweh was the way the Israelites referred to God because it didn't mean anything. It was just a bunch of letters that well, talk about yeah, it's the unspoken uh, name of God as well. And it's not to be confused with the earlier Canaanite names of gods either, that it were similar. Well, even though the scribes were writing it, didn't they just stop when they came to that? They stopped and they would uh, ritually clean themselves before they wrote. Sometimes they would do that every with every letter, and they would not say the letter. Well, let's close in prayer.
Dear Heavenly Father, you are the God of the unspoken name. The name that we should keep sacred in the heart. It should be unspoken because it should be only in our hearts. When we throw the name around casually and, and uh, with disregard, we lose the concept of your awe, of your greatness, of your superiority in everything. And that's what this scripture here in 46 shows us, that you are the true God. And the confusion that we have over these idols is what pulls us away. We constantly lose track of where we need to go. And you make it so simple for us to get back on track. All we have to do is stop and ask you for help. Now, God, you know, as men, especially American men, we don't like to stop and ask directions. But when it comes to matters like this, when it comes to following your will, when it comes to getting forgiveness and being close to you, we need to humble ourselves. I thank you for being a God that shows that kind of mercy and love. And I praise you for all the things that you have bestowed upon us and continue to give us. And I praise you in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Don't forget to sign up, folks, for the Saturday night thing on your blue cards. He hasn't done that. He did it already prepare for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. So, what do you think of the stew? Good. Too much chili powder? The uh, second helping tastes just a little better than the first helping. Oh, okay. I'm <laughs>